ऑल इंडिया रेडियो प्रेजेंट मॉर्निंग न्यूज गुड मॉर्निंग आई एम सुनील वर्मा इन विस्मी सुभद्रा रामचंद्रन द हेडलाइंस प्राइम मिनिस्टर नरेंद्र मोदी सेज इंडिया रिसीव न्यू एनर्जी एंड इंस्पिरेशन एज द नेशन ब्रेक्स फ्री ऑफ शैकल्स ऑफ कॉलोनाइजेशन ड्यूरिंग द अमृत काल इनोग्रेट्स कर्तव्य पथ एंड अनवेल स्टैच्यू ऑफ नेताजी सुभाष चंद्र बोस एट इंडिया गेट प्राइम मिनिस्टर सेज कर्तव्य पथ इज नॉट जस्ट अ रोड ऑफ ब्रिक्स एंड स्टोन फॉर अ लिविंग एग्जाम्पल ऑफ इंडिया डेमोक्रेटिक पास्ट एंड ओल्ड टाइम आइडियल्स होम मिनिस्टर अमित शाह टू फ्लैग ऑफ फिट इंडिया फ्रीडम मोटर राइड एट मेजर ध्यानचंद नेशनल स्टेडियम इन न्यू डेली दिस मॉर्निंग प्रेजिडेंट द्रौपदी मुर्मू टू लॉन्च प्रधानमंत्री टीबी मुक्त भारत अभियान टूडे टू री इन्वेगरेट द मिशन ऑफ टीबी इलिमिनेशन क्वीन एलिजाबेथ द सेकंड यूकेज लॉन्गेस्ट सर्विंग मॉनक पास इज अवे आफ्टर रेनिंग फॉर सेवेंटी ईयर्स प्राइम मिनिस्टर मोदी सेज क्वीन विल बी रिमेम्बर्ड एज अ स्टोल वर्ड ऑफ आवर टाइम्स इन स्पोर्ट्स इंडिया बीट अफगानिस्तान बाय हंड्रेड एंड वन रन इन लास्ट सुपर फोर मैच ऑफ एशिया कप टी ट्वेंटी क्रिकेट इन दुबई एंड Tokyo Olympic gold medalist Neeraj Chopra becomes first Indian to win Zurich Diamond League final in Switzerland. Prime Minister Narendra Modi has said that India has received new energy and inspiration as the nation is breaking free of the shackles of colonization during the Amrit Kaal. He said this while inaugurating the Kartavya Path, a stretch of the central vista from the Rashtrapati Bhavan to India Gate yesterday. The Prime Minister also unveiled the statue of Netaji Subhash Chandra Bose at India Gate, congratulating the people of India for sharing yet another symbol of colonialism. The Prime Minister said, "King's Way is now history, and a new era has begun in the form of Kartavya Path." आजादी के अमृत महोत्सव में देश को एक नई प्रेरणा मिली है नई ऊर्जा मिली है आज हम गुजरे हुए कल को छोड़कर आने वाले कल की तस्वीर में नए रंग भर रहे हैं आज जो हर तरफ ये नई आभा दिख रही है वो नए भारत के आत्मविश्वास की आभा है गुलामी का प्रतीक किंग्स वे यानी राजपथ इतिहास की बात हो गया हमेशा के लिए मिट गया है कर्तव्य पथ के रूप में नए इतिहास का सृजन हुआ है अप्रीशिएटिंग द हार्ड वर्क ऑफ द श्रम जीवीज हु वर्क फॉर री डिवेलप्ड सेंट्रल विस्टर मिस्टर मोदी इन्वाइटेड दम एज हिज स्पेशल गेस्ट ऑन नेक्स्ट ईयर्स रिपब्लिक डे मैं अपने उन श्रमिक साथियों का विशेष आभार व्यक्त करना चाहता हूं जिन्होंने कर्तव्य पद को केवल बनाया ही नहीं है बल्कि अपने श्रम की पराकाष्ठा से देश को कर्तव्य पथ दिखाया भी है और सामान्य मानवी के भीतर भारत का कितना भव्य सपना बसा हुआ है अपना पसीना बहाते समय वो उसी सपने को सजीव कर देते हैं जब मैं उन हर गरीब मजदूर को भी देश की तरफ से धन्यवाद करता हूं जो देश के अभूतपूर्व विकास को ये हमारे श्रमिक भाई गति दे रहे हैं और जब मैंने इन श्रमिक भाई बहनों से मिला तो मैंने उनसे कहा है कि इस बार छब्बीस जनवरी को जिन्होंने यहां पर काम किया है जो श्रमिक भाई है वो परिवार के साथ मेरे विशेष अतिथि रहेंगे छब्बीस जनवरी का ही सेड हिस्ट्री हैज बिन री रिटन एज द ह्यूज स्टैच्यू ऑफ नेताजी सुभाष चंद्र बोस हैज बिन इंस्टॉल्ड नियर द इंडिया गेट वेर अ स्टैच्यू ऑफ अ रिप्रेजेंटेटिव ऑफ द ब्रिटिशर्स यूज टू स्टैंड ड्यूरिंग ब्रिटिश रूल देश का प्रयास है कि नेताजी की वो ऊर्जा देश का पथ प्रदर्शन करे कर्तव्य पथ पर नेताजी की प्रतिभा इसका माध्यम बनेगी देश की नीतियों और निर्णयों में सुभाष बाबू की छाप रहे ये प्रतिमा इसके लिए प्रेरणा स्रोत बनेगी ही एडेड दैट विद द इंस्टॉलेशन ऑफ द स्टैच्यू a new path has been established for an empowered india the prime minister emphasized that the kartavya path is not just a road of bricks and stones but a living example of india's democratic past and all time ideals highlighting the many decisions taken by his government in the last 8 years which had the imprint of netaji subhash chandra bose the prime minister stressed 
that Netaji was the first head of Akhand Bharat who unfurled the national flag in the Andaman and Nicobar Islands. पिछले आठ वर्षों में हमने एक के बाद एक ऐसे कितने ही निर्णय लिए जिन पर नेताजी के आदर्शों और सपनों की छाप है नेताजी सुभाष अखंड भारत के पहले प्रधान थे जिन्होंने उन्नीस से भी पहले अंडमान को आजाद कराकर तिरंगा फहराया उस वक्त उन्होंने कल्पना की थी कि लाल किले पर तिरंगा फहराने की क्या अनुभूति होगी इस अनुभूति का साक्षात्कार मैंने स्वयं किया जब मुझे आजाद हिंद सरकार के 75 वर्ष होने पर लाल किले पर तिरंगा फहराने का सौभाग्य मिला हमारी ही सरकार के प्रयास से लाल किले में नेताजी और आजाद हिंद फौज से जुड़ा म्यूजियम भी बनाया गया ही पॉइंटेड आउट दैट हिज गवर्नमेंट हैज चेंज्ड वेरियस लॉज दैट वॉज देयर सिंस द टाइम ऑफ द ब्रिटिश ये बदलाव केवल प्रतीकों तक ही सीमित नहीं है ये बदलाव देश की नीतियों का भी हिस्सा बन चुका है देश अंग्रेजों के जमाने से चले आ रहे सैकड़ों कानूनों को बदल चुका है भारतीय बजट जो इतने दशकों से ब्रिटिश संसद के समय का अनुसरण कर रहा था उसका समय और तारीख भी बदल गई राष्ट्रीय शिक्षा नीति के जरिए अब विदेशी भाषा की मजबूरी से भी देश के युवाओं को आजाद किया जा रहा है यानी देश का विचार और देश का व्यवहार दोनों गुलामी की मानसिकता से मुक्त हो रहे हैं ये मुक्ति हमें विकसित भारत के लक्ष्य तक लेकर के जाए रिकॉर्डिंग द सेक्रीफाइस एंड वैलर ऑफ नेताजी सुभाष चंद्र बोस मिस्टर मोदी सेट इंडिया ग्लोरियस हिस्ट्री रन एज लाइफ ब्लड अमंग द नेशन यूथ ही सेट इंडिया वुड हैव रीच्ड अनप्रेसिडेंटेड हाइट्स इफ द कंट्री हैड फॉलो द विजन ऑफ नेताजी सुभाष चंद्र बोस अगर आजादी के बाद हमारा भारत सुभाष बाबू की राह पर चला होता तो आज देश कितनी ऊंचाइयों पर होता लेकिन दुर्भाग्य से आजादी के बाद हमारे इस महानायक को भुला दिया गया उनके विचारों को उनसे जुड़े प्रतीकों तक को नजरअंदाज कर दिया गया सुभाष बाबू के 125वें जयंती वर्ष के आयोजन के अवसर पर मुझे कोलकाता में उनके घर जाने का सौभाग्य मिला था नेताजी से जुड़े स्थान पर उनकी जो अनंत ऊर्जा थी मैंने उसे महसूस किया द प्राइम मिनिस्टर एक्सोडेड पीपल टू शेड कलोनियल लेगेसी ऑल टूगेदर ही सेड द मूवमेंट इज नाइ द बिगिनिंग नो द एंड बट अ संकल्प यात्रा आजादी के 75 वर्ष पूरे होने पर देश ने अपने लिए पंच प्राणों का विजन रखा है इन पंच प्राणों में विकास के बड़े लक्ष्यों का संकल्प है कर्तव्यों की प्रेरणा इसमें गुलामी की मानसिकता के त्याग का आह्वान है अपनी विरासत पर गर्व का बोध है आज भारत के आदर्श अपने हैं आयाम अपने हैं आज भारत के संकल्प अपने हैं लक्ष्य अपने आज हमारे पथ अपने हैं हमारे प्रतीक अपने हैं अगर राजपथ का अस्तित्व तो समाप्त होकर कर्तव्य पथ बना है अगर जॉर्ज पंचम की मूर्ति के निशान को हटाकर नेताजी की मूर्ति लगी है तो ये गुलामी की मानसिकता के परित्याग का पहला उदाहरण नहीं है ये न शुरुआत है न अंत है ये मन और मानस की आजादी का लक्ष्य हासिल करने तक निरंतर चल The jet black granite statue of Netaji Bose, measuring a total of 28 feet, is placed under the canopy near India Gate. The statue is completely hand sculpted using traditional techniques and modern tools. The statue of Netaji Subhash Chandra Bose has been installed in the same place where a hologram statue of Netaji was unveiled in January this year by Mr. Modi on Parakram Divas. to mark the 125th birth anniversary of Netaji Prime Minister Modi also witnessed the exhibition on the rebound Central Vista Avenue
Delhi Metro Rail Corporation DMRC will provide bus service for those visiting Central Vista or India Gate from today. The electric buses will pick up the visitors from the four pick-up points, Dheron Row, Rajghat, Kanaut Place near Palika Parking and the Jawaharlal Nehru Stadium and will drop off at Gate No. 1 of the National Stadium C Hexagon. Union Home Minister Amit Shah will flag off the Fit India Freedom Motor Ride at Major Dhan Chand National Stadium in New Delhi this morning. It is a pan-India bike ride by 75 bikers to 75 iconic locations. Minister of State for Youth Affairs and Sports Nishit Pramanik will also grace the event. President Draupdi Murmu will virtually launch the Pradhan Mantri TV Mukt Bharat Abhiyan today to reinvigorate the mission of TV elimination from the country by 2025. Prime Minister Narendra Modi had given the clarion call to end TB in the country five years ahead of the Sustainable Development Goals of 2030 at the Delhi End TB Summit in March 2018. The Abhiyan will be launched in the presence of Union Health Minister Dr. Mansuk Mandavia and Minister of State for Health Dr. Bharti Praveen Pavar. Queen Elizabeth II, the UK's longest-serving monarch, has passed away after reigning for 70 years. She was 96. She breathed her last yesterday at a Scottish estate, Balmoral. The Queen came to the throne in 1952 and witnessed enormous social change. Her son, King Charles III, said the death of his beloved mother was a moment of great sadness for him and his family and that her loss would be deeply felt around the world. The king is expected to address the nation today. Prime Minister Liz Truss, who was appointed by the Queen on Tuesday, said the monarch was the rock on which modern Britain was built and she provided stability and strength. World leaders and dignitaries have paid tribute to Queen Elizabeth II. Prime Minister Narendra Modi has expressed pain over the death of the Queen. In a tweet, Mr Modi said that the Queen will be remembered as a stalwart of our times. He added that the Queen personified dignity and decency in public life and provided inspiring leadership to her nation and people. Over the past 75 years since independence, India's largest public service broadcaster, All India Radio, has been the proverbial storyteller for the 1.3 billion citizens across the country. All India Radio celebrating 75 years of freedom with a series, Azad Bharat Ki Baat, Akashwani Ke Saat. It showcases the journey of India since independence in various walks of life through the storytelling of All India Radio. Azad Bharat Ki Baat, Akashwani Ke Saat. Reliving the journey of India since independence over the last 75 years with All India Radio. From 15th August, the series is being broadcast on All India Radio, 100.1 FM Gold Channel, Primetime News Bulletins and across all its platforms. Tune in to stay updated with All India Radio. In today's episode, we bring you the story of two legends of Indian music, Lata Mangeshkar and Bhupen Hazarika. Lata Mangeshkar learned music from her father, Dina Nath Mangeshkar, who was active in the world of theatre. She started her career singing for Marathi movies. She also did small roles in a few films, but her heart was in singing. Her big break came in 1949 with the release of a haunting song titled Aega Anivala for the movie Mehel. Over the next few decades, she sang thousands of songs in almost all Indian languages. Lata was nominated to Rajya Sabha in 1999. She appeared in the Guinness World Records, which listed her as the most recorded artist in the history near Guwahati. Later, he won a scholarship from Columbia University in New York and completed his PhD in mass communications. He travelled to Kolkata with his mentors Jyoti Prasad Agarwal and Vishnu Prasad Rabha in 1936 and recorded his first song. He also sang two songs in the film Indramati in 1939. At the age of 13, he wrote his first song, Agni Ru Gor Firangoti Mori. From 1967 to 72, he was a member of the Assam Legislative Assembly. He made several award-winning films like Shakuntala Sur, Prati Dhani. His directorial ventures include Lati Ghati, Chikmik Bujuli, For Whom the Sun Shines, and 
Mera Dharam Meri Maa. He composed music for several Assamese and Bangla movies including Aarop, Chameli Meem Saab and Shimana Perrier and many Hindi films including Aarop, Ek Pal and Rudhali. He was a prominent playback singer and lent his voice to various movies. Vistar hai apar, raja dono par, kare haa kar, nishabh da sada, ho ganga tum. गंगा बहती हो क्यों आजाद भारत की बात आकाशवाणी के साथ कैन बी एक्सिस्ट ऑन एट ए आई आर न्यूज अलर्ट ऑन ट्विटर न्यूज ऑन ए आई आर ऑफिशियल यूट्यूब चैनल न्यूज ऑन ए आई आर एप फेसबुक एंड इंस्टाग्राम हैंडल सो फ्रेंड्स ट्यून इन टू ऑल इंडिया रेडियो न्यूज फॉर आजाद भारत की बात आकाशवाणी के साथ You are listening to the morning news on All India Radio. A reminder of the headlines before we move on. Prime Minister Narendra Modi says India receives new energy and inspiration as the nation breaks free of shackles of colonization during the Amrit Kal, inaugurates Kartavya Path, and unveils statue of Netaji Subhash Chandra Bose at India Gate. Prime Minister says Kartavya Path is not just a road of bricks and stones, but a living example of India's democratic past and all-time ideals. Home Minister Amit Shah to flag off Fit India Freedom Motor Ride at Major Dhyan Chand Stadium National Stadium in New Delhi this morning. President Draupadi Murmu to launch Pradhan Mantri TB Muks Bharat Abhiyan to, today to reinvigorate the mission of TB elimination. Queen Elizabeth II, UK's longest serving monarch, passes away after reigning for 70 years. Prime Minister Modi says Queen will be remembered as a stalwart of our times. In sports, India beat Afghanistan by 101 runs in last Super 4 match of Asia Cup T20 cricket in Dubai. And Tokyo Olympic gold medalist Neeraj Chopra becomes the first Indian to win Zurich Diamond League final in Switzerland. For quick news updates around the clock, follow us on our Twitter handle at AIR News Alerts. अपने बिजनेस को बढ़ाने के लिए लीजिए आकाशवाणी का सहयोग और दीजिए उसे बुलंदियों के पंख आपका बिजनेस लोकल है या राष्ट्रीय आकाशवाणी देती है उपभोक्ताओं तक पहुंचने का हर विकल्प और अब तो आप घर दफ्तर या दुकान पर बैठे बैठे कर सकते हैं आकाशवाणी के किसी भी केंद्र के लिए विज्ञापनों की बुकिंग आकाशवाणी के विभिन्न चैनलों पर विज्ञापन देना सुलभ और सस्ता बुकिंग है तो संपर्क करें आठ सात शून्य 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 एक चार दो चार दो आरोप आठ सात शून्य 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 एक चार दो चार दो द टेन डे गणेश उत्सव दैट वॉज सेलिब्रेटेड विद डिवोशन फेस्ट एंड एक्सुबरेंस कम्स टू क्लोज टूडे इन महाराष्ट्र एंड अदर पार्ट ऑफ द कंट्री द फेस्टिवल विटनेस्ड लैक्स ऑफ डेवटीज विजिटिंग द गणेश पंडाल्स एंड पेइंग ओबेसन्स टू सीक ब्लेसिंग्स फ्रॉम देयर फेवरेट गॉड कॉमन मेन सेलिब्रिटीज एंड पॉलिटिशियंस थ्रॉन्ग्ड इन लार्ज नंबर्स टू टेक द ब्लेसिंग्स ऑफ बिग गणेश मंडल्स इन मुंबई एंड पुणे मेन वाइल सिविक बॉडीज हैव मेड All arrangements for immersion of Ganesh idols in the state. Our correspondent reports that the tourism department has set up an air-conditioned pavilion for foreign tourists to witness the immersion ceremony at Girgaon Chowpati in Mumbai. A total of 73 natural immersion sites and over 150 artificial ponds will be available for visitation of Ganesh idols in Mumbai. According to Mumbai's civic body, 786 lifeguards, 45 motor boats, and over 3,000 floodlights have been deployed to ensure safety of devotees. Besides 15,500 policemen, 3,200 officers, eight companies of Maharashtra State Reserve Police Force, one company of Rapid Action Force, and 750 home guards will all. Also, be keeping an eye on the city. In view of the heavy rain warning, the Municipal Corporation of Greater Mumbai has urged people not to venture into the sea. Devotees must use jaman rafts and train manpower available at all locations for immersion. Madhuri Pange, AIR News, Mumbai. In morning matters now let's listen to a discussion on India Japan 2 plus 2 ministerial meeting the participants are Skandranjan Thail former diplomat and Sanjay Jha journalist 
in the 2 plus 2 dialogue the two sides deliberated on ways to further expand bilateral cooperation in areas of defense and security besides taking stock of the developments in the Indo-Pacific. Ambassador, what can we expect from this edition of talk between two countries? This is a very important dialogue with a very special partner. Japan is our special strategic and global uh, partner since 2014 and uh, we have such dialogue with very important and close strategic friends. For instance, we have a similar dialogue with United States and US and Japan both are members of Quad where India is also a member along with Australia and the focus of this dialogue on defense and security related issues. The first such dialogue took place in December 9, 2019 and it was very important and same two ministers had uh, participated from our side and the focus was on terrorism, stability in Indo-Pacific and of course peace, prosperity and progress in bilaterally as well as in the region because what we need to note is that there is a convergence in the vision of India and Japan as far as the challenges to security and defense which are emanating in the Indo-Pacific region. You spoke about the security aspects of this dialogue. We have seen China's growing military capability and assertiveness on the territorial disputes and they are at the heart of the deteriorating environment of India and Japan. Beijing has sought to unilaterally alter the territorial status quo. So both the countries are facing uh, this assertiveness of China. Yes, security related issues where the main challenger may come from China it is a central and core part of this dialogue, particularly in the context of how China tried to put extreme pressure on Taiwan just in the last month or so and has disturbed the peace and tranquility of the entire Western Pacific. And Japan, as we know, as our listeners know, has been a pacifist nation. It is a pacifist constitution after the Second World War. But it is now waking up to the threat being posed by a China which is getting very rapidly militarized, which is expanding its blue water navy very rapidly and blue water navy is an offensive capacity. And under Prime Minister Shinzo Abe who passed away unfortunately, Japan had started to change its defense posture in three major ways. One, that it is increasing its defense spending and they want to increase the defense spending from 1% of GDP to 2% of GDP. And Japan is also ready to assume more military responsibility by joining regional alliances. And we have seen like Malabar exercises, they are becoming more and more important and are becoming more and more strategy driven with the participation of United States and Australian Army also. Ambassador, you mentioned how Japan is recasting its national security vision in face of aggressive China. But then there is so much that Delhi and Tokyo could do together in meeting their common security challenge. Yes, Japan has been assisting India in many ways in trying to strengthen our infrastructure, our industrial development. We also saw how this Suzuki company will be investing rupees 30,000 crore more in India. So this collaboration needs to extend also to defense industry. There has been a lot of talk about purchase of some defense equipment, some submarines from Japan, but it has not fructified. I hope that some advance takes place in getting Japanese defense industry more integrated with India's rising defense capabilities. And here the biggest assistance can come from Japan government side that they should facilitate transfer of technology from Japanese companies to Indian companies just as the Russian companies do. 
the Japanese government should motivate its private defense manufacturing companies to not look only at profits but treat India as a real defense partner and transfer state-of-the-art technology to Indian companies. For there is a much that Delhi and Tokyo could do together in meeting their common security challenges and bolster economic relations. Uh, Ambassador, thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Defense Minister Rajnath Singh and External Affairs Minister Dr. S. J. Shankar today called on Japanese Prime Minister Fumio Kishida at the conclusion of India-Japan 2 plus 2 meeting. Dr. J. Shankar underlined the importance of closer coordination of policies and interests of India and Japan at this time. He expressed confidence that the vision which Mr. Kishida and Prime Minister Narendra Modi have articulated will be realized early. Mr. Singh extended his heartfelt condolences on the sad demise of former Prime Minister Shinzo Abe. He said, India-Japan partnership will have a defining role to play in ensuring peace and stability in the region. In India's last Super 4 match of Asia Cup T20 cricket, India defeated Afghanistan by 101 runs at the Dubai International Cricket Stadium. Chasing a victory target of 213 runs last night, Afghanistan made 111 runs for the loss of 8 wickets in the stipulated 20 overs. Sri Lanka will take on Pakistan in the last Super 4 match of Asia Cup T20 cricket at Dubai International Cricket Stadium at 7.30 this evening, India time. Both the teams will play the final match on Sunday evening. Tokyo Olympic gold medalist javelin thrower Neera Chopra has achieved yet another historic feat as he became the first Indian to win the prestigious Zurich Diamond League final 2022 in Switzerland. Neera Chopra's second throw, measuring 88.44 meter, won him the Diamond League trophy last night. And now let us have a look at the weather forecast for today. The national capital, Delhi, will have generally cloudy sky and maximum temperature will be nearly 36 degrees Celsius. The lower limit of the temperature was 26 degrees. Mumbai will have generally cloudy sky with heavy rain. The temperature will hover between 25 and 30 degrees Celsius. Chennai will have generally cloudy sky with light rain. The minimum temperature was 26 degrees and the maximum will be around 30 degrees Celsius. Kolkata will have a partly cloudy sky with the possibility of moderate rain or thunderstorm. The maximum temperature will be around 35 degrees Celsius. Srinagar will have mainly clear sky. Jammu and Muzaffarabad will have partly cloudy sky with the possibility of rain or thunderstorm or dust storm. And Leh and Gilgit will have partly cloudy sky. And now an overview of today's newspapers. Hindustan Times carries a colourful photograph of the Kartavya Path, opened yesterday by the PM, with the headline, Vista Bell's Beauty with Duty, Colonial Vestige sh Shed, as PM sets India on Kartavya Path, is the headline in the Pioneer. Netaji's statue installed in the central vista has a Mysuru connection. The prestigious project was helmed by sculptor Arun Yogi Raj, writes the Hindu. The news of the death of Queen Elizabeth II appears on the front page of all dailies. Queen is dead. Charles King headlines the Asian age. India-China begin disengaging troops from hot springs, reports the Tribune. Eye on China, Japan and India to boost defense ties, writes the Indian Express. DRDO and Army jointly conduct six flight test of quick reaction surface to air missile system against high-speed aerial targets, reports the statesman. At 82,000, India got most U.S. student visas this season, reports the Times of India. And finally, the just-launched iPhone 14 is to be made in India in two to three months, informs the Economic Times. And now, before we end the bulletin, the headlines once again. Prime Minister Narendra Modi says India receives new energy and inspiration as the nation breaks free of shackles of colonization during the Amrit Kal, inaugurates Kartavya Path and unveils statue of Netaji Subhash Chandra Bose at India Gate. Prime Minister says Kartavya Path is not just a road of bricks and stones but a living example of India's democratic past and all-time ideals. Home Minister Amit Shah flags off Fit India Freedom Motor Ride at Major Dhyan Chand National Stadium in New Delhi this morning. President Draupadi Murmu to launch Pradhan Mantri TB Mukt Bharat Abhiyan today to reinvigorate the mission of TB elimination. Queen Elizabeth II, UK's longest serving monarch, passes away after reigning for 70 years. Prime Minister Modi says Queen will be remembered as a stalwart of our times. In sports, India beat Afghanistan by 101 runs in last Super 4 match of Asia Cup T20 cricket in Dubai. And Tokyo Olympic gold medalist Neera Chopra becomes first Indian to win Zurich Diamond League final in Switzerland. And with that, we end the morning news. Have a nice day. <laughs>